on today's Techno Babble. Should you live stream in SD, HD, or 4K? This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Tech No Babble. This is the show where every week we talk about using video and graphic design in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. I'd love for you to join the conversation, by the way, so don't hesitate to drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or if you're watching the video, there's a comment section below it. Just use that. That's cool as well. And uh, you can interact with me and the show that way. So this is uh, the subject of an article that I've just submitted to Church Production Magazine. You might know that I write for them. And I also got this exact same question from a friend of mine who has just started working in a larger than he's used to church. And they're running an HD video system right now and trying to decide if it's time to upgrade. So with that in mind, I thought, well, let's talk about it, because I've done a little research. First off, let's start with what happens if you don't have a live streaming system. I don't think you should buy an SD system. You shouldn't go with standard definition. It's too late in the game. It's 2015. If you already have the system, I'm not saying to trash it this very instant, but I'm saying you need to start be start thinking of an upgrade because we're uh, kind of, in equivalent terms, we're kind of at the end of the 60s and the early 70s where black and white is on its way out. Color is going to be the main thing, and if you don't have color, people are going to start noticing. So that is the difference between HD, high definition, and SD, standard definition, is HD is just table stakes now. Uh, that's a gambling term, but what you really need to think of is that's the standard that everyone should be aiming for. Now, if you've been streaming for 10 years in standard definition, you might have a couple more years left in your equipment. That's fine, but don't go out and buy a standard definition system in 2015. It's just too late. It's kind of like I use this analogy in the article. It's kind of like your neighbor has a, a 2005 car, never had a lick of trouble with it, so you buy the exact same make and model in year. Basically, it's identical to your neighbor's car. Your neighbor has had it for 10 years, has had a great experience, so you buy a 10-year-old car, you expect the same thing. Well, the next year he goes, you know, I think it's time to upgrade, and he upgrades to a 2016 car. At the same time, you start having trouble with your 2005 car. Now, you might have expected since you just got it that it would be fine for years to come, just like his was when he got it 10 years previous, except someone else already put the 10 years into your car. So you're not starting out with a brand new system. You're starting out with something that's on its last legs. Standard definition is like that. If you've already got it, if it's already paid for, it's working fine, plan on upgrading, but you don't have to upgrade this very instant, but I would think in the next year or two you would think about doing just that. If you are just starting from scratch, buy high definition. 
that's going to last you probably 10 years, no problem. And remember, you don't buy for the present, you buy for the future. So if you buy a high definition system, I can imagine in 2025, they might be what uh, at the point that standard definition is now, where a lot of people don't notice that it's not ultra high definition or 4K, but you know when stuff starts to break, it's time to upgrade. So that's those are the thoughts that you should be thinking. Now, if you're in a position where it's time to upgrade and you've already got a high definition system, should you go with Ultra HD, UHD, or 4K? I don't know. Here's why. I don't know which you should go for. You see, they're different. UHD is double in each direction what 1080p is. So it's 3840 by 2160. That's ultra high definition. At my local Walmart, there's a one, one uh, UHD set. There's no physical media for UHD yet. There's some standards they're working on for streaming, but they're... It's really on the bleeding edge. Now, 4K, widely accepted in theaters, but it is 4096 by 2160. So it's actually 256 pixels wider than UHD. But here's the funny thing. People are calling UHD 4K, even though none of the dimensions include 4,000 pixels. But 4K includes 4,096 wide. So it actually is 4K. So there's some confusion out there in naming. There's some problems with delivery of content. It's really bleeding edge. For live streaming, I don't know. I mean, you could use the, um, there, there are 4K switchers out there. There are 4K cameras that can do the work. You could do that and you will have a first mover advantage in that when someone has a sparkling new UHD television, they might be looking for content, and if your church is one of the few players that has it out there, you've got a distinct advantage. So that's good. But what if you choose UHD but 4K wins out? Or what if you choose 4K and UHD wins out? Then you've got some compatibility issues that you've got to sort out. So in my mind, it feels like when we first went to HD, my father-in-law bought a 4x3 HD 720p slash 1080i tube TV. Uh, check your local electronics store. Do you see any of those? No. What about plasmas? Not a lot of those around either. Uh, component only? No. No, having trouble with those? Yeah, a lot of things have changed since HD started being introduced into the market. So, if it's the case that a lot of things have changed, then maybe we're going to see the exact same thing in the HD slash 4K, UHD slash 4K arena. So I can't in good conscience recommend it to someone that thinks, oh yeah, we'll invest now and we'll be good until 2030. Uh, I just don't know that. I think that would be like back in 2000 investing in a projection TV and thinking, hey, this is sparkling 720p. I don't know what these HDMI ports are, but we don't need any of them. We've got component. Yeah, it, it just, we're at that bleeding edge point where everything has not shaken out yet. So I can't in good conscience recommend it to all churches, 
but I think there are some that might be able to get a distinct advantage and they can use that advantage to change eternity. So I hope that that helps you. I hope that it helps you understand where to go, what to do, which direction to take. I guess the too long didn't read version of this, if you're familiar with web speak, is don't buy new standard def today. If you've got it, think about upgrading it. If you've got high definition 1080p, for example, then you're probably okay for a few years. Most churches should not use ultra high definition or 4K right now. And for live streaming, I'm not even sure if there are a lot of live streaming hosts that provide it. And if they did, it's going to be super expensive. So I think I would stick to 720p or 1080p for the next couple of years and use that. Well, I hope that helped you. If it did and you'd like to join my newsletter, don't hesitate to head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can choose uh, one of the gifts that I have for you, including the video course or some of my materials on ProPresenter 5. You'll also get a free copy of my newsletter, and I'd love to send that to you on a weekly basis. Do that every week, chock full of tips, ideas, stuff I'm working on, that, that kind of thing. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.